Namaste and good, every, good day, everybody. Welcome to the first and hopefully many discussions with various guests and topics from wellness, fitness to whatever brings joy and happiness. Before I begin full disclosure, uh, all points and experiences discussed belong to either myself or the guest speaker. And in no way, we, we're just trying to keep this as, as authentic and, on, and honest as possible. So I just wanted to leave, it, leave that out there as well. Uh, and just for, before we begin as well, quick favor, if you could just give this uh, channel a, a like and quick follow, uh, it will be in the, win, mean the world to me. And I'll be super grateful for, for all the support and love that you show this channel. Uh, and, in that, and in that case, let's begin. Uh, on, today's, on today's episode, I have a, a very special friend, someone who I've known for almost over a decade and, uh, and has become a, a really good friend to me, uh, an advocate for fitness and well-being, and has just shown, you know, the utmost uh, resilience in, in, in showing empowerment to women as well. So please welcome in, welcome me, welcome me in joining Roseanne Philip. How are you doing? Thanks, Kishan. Yeah, I'm doing really good. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Also excited to share some uh, knowledge and experience and maybe yeah, I help one or two people in some small way. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. No, you're amazing. I'm super grateful also for you for accepting the invite. Yeah, I think it's important for us to help this, these kind of discussions to uh, help somebody else along their journey as well. Uh, so let's let's get right, right right into it. When we talk about fitness and 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 well-being, I think it comes from a lot of inspiration. Something that inspires you to you know to continue on that journey or begin that journey. What was the what was that uh, moment for you that that inspired you to to become a a, a fitness influencer, so to speak? Well, I, from an early age, I think I was quite a bit of a tomboy. So at school, I played volleyball and, and netball. And what I found was that I was really good at it. So I think that was the first thing that inspired and, and motivated me. And, uh, you know, my parents weren't very much into activities and sports. So finding something that I had a special gift or skill for just motivated me to do it a little bit more. Um, and there was a, a fitness model that I had been watching for some years. Her name is Andrea Brazier. And I think what triggered the whole a uh, gym bug for me was what she had done. So one day she was passing by a gym and she saw a couple of people uh, working out and she said, okay, she's going to go in and, and do a couple of exercises, see what this uh, rave is about. And uh, she did a little bit of exercise and she says, okay, cool. Afterwards, sometime her shoulders developed, then her glutes developed, then her legs developed. And she says she wanted to see what her body could transform into. And the same was, you know, in, in my uh, case, I wanted to get into the gym. And as I started, I saw certain changes and I was like, wow, sort of like a transformer experience. Like what can the skinny, scrawny girl transform into? Um, so the inspiration was actually looking at the results. That was my motivation. And I'm sure that comes with a lot of challenges, right, as well? 100%, yes. Yeah, um, I mean, in terms of obstacles, and I know many people out there very similar to me, uh, I was the first person in my immediate family to get into exercise. So I come from a, a traditional Indian home where it's curries and chocolates and sweets, and, you know, we have uh, diabetes and high cholesterol. So it was a challenge for me to break out of that box, uh, you know, break out of that mold. And, uh, you know, I would get comments from my mom and my dad saying, you know, just be careful. It's not normal that girls go into the weight section and lift right. heavy weights. Like, what are you doing? Just be careful. So um, it took a little bit of time, but I think eventually they bought into the idea. I got their buy-in and, and they see that it's part of my DNA and something that I'm really passionate about. So I'm sure many people watching experience the same challenges if you come from the same background that I do. But if you have a passion for it, I think, yeah, just continue and be resilient. Yeah, I think that's that's important to note is the passion. Uh, if you're passionate about something, it doesn't become a chore. It becomes like a it's a natural thing, you know, it doesn't become yeah. a choice, like something that you, you're excited to, to actually go and do. And I think that's, in, yes. that's an important key, a key factor to note is the, is the passion that you have for, for something that you do and you love. 100%. Yeah, I think in, in your case as well, I know that, uh, you know, you love soccer and you're quite active and fit yourself. What were some of your early onset uh, inspirations that you had? So I was, I think I was, I think I was born with that active, active chromosome. Okay inside of me i think from early days i think my mom always told me the story about uh, i was moving since i was six months you know i was always like active and and moving and then i always was intrigued by you know by sports equipment like especially you know soccer ball or cricket ball anything that was like that could you know you could you could do something with and uh, 
my earliest memory, I think, was sitting with my my granddad and my dad watching, I think, Man United play at, I think, six years old or even earlier than that, I think. And I had the ball next to me on my hand, like just my, I, was, I think I was sitting on my, with my dad and uh, the ball was, was next to me on either hand, whichever, whichever hand I don't remember. And I was just watching the game. And I think that's where the love started, I think, since then. And ever since then, I've, I've tried to incorporate or try and experience all kinds of sports. You know, it, it was, that was me. I was like that, you know, the active person. I was never the, the super A grade academic. Uh, but I excelled on the on the sports field, and I think that kept me uh, away from a lot of the, the the bad stuff in life as well. It kept me grounded. Yeah. It kept me, and it kept me, uh, you know, just focused on 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 a specific task. And I think that was very important for me because of I have also kind of an addictive personality. So I think if I went down the wrong path, it it would have been a little bit of a challenge for me to come back. So I yeah. think sports and being active just I think really helped me yeah, in my childhood. And even today, uh, just to have a, a positive mindset. And I know things always don't go your way, but uh, it's something that we we always can, you know, fall back on and say, what worked for me back then? I can, we can always, you know, relate back to it and, and try and incorporate it in our daily lives. 100%. Yeah, I, I totally hear you. I mean, each person is... Uh has been created in such a unique, specific way. You know, for me, I find genetically I have stronger shoulders, but my legs, are, you know, there are girls in the gym who really uh, give me a run for my money with regards to legs. But I think what we need to do is just embrace those strengths. Um, and, you know, that's how we really uh, achieve our purpose and, and be happy and contentment. It's just accepting who we are. And self-acceptance is such an important thing as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Self-love self acceptance is is the, is very key especially within our societies i think openly and candidly it's very difficult when we being so when we are judged by our societies you know and it's not our fault but i think it's also a very toxic trait that we that should be starting to like you know we start challenging and saying no it's you know we have kick goals and dreams and we should everybody's different we don't always have to conform to the little norm that everybody I follows know. you know yeah, yeah. No, great stuff. Uh, and I know with also with the fitness journey, you have a goal. You know, do you have like a specific goal in mind, or and then how has that goal evolved since the time you started? A great question, uh, and it may amuse you. So when I first started out this journey, like I said, I mentioned Andrea Brazier. I, you know, I wanted to train because I wanted to look like Andrea Brazier. And then I looked at some of the CrossFit powerlifter girls, and I was like, I want to be as strong as some of these CrossFit girls and the powerlifters. Then I looked at the Victoria's Secret models, and I'm like, okay, I want to be like these girls look uh, the way that they look on the catwalk. And that has really evolved over time, uh, you know, because I found – uh, a niche in my own body and what I love and have a passion, my mindset has shifted from one that is uh, solely about aesthetics to one that is about health. So now my priority is about having longevity and being healthy so that my body can do the things that I want to do as I get older. I don't want to feel like a prisoner in my body, in my own body. So I'm trying to put in that work and that effort now so that my body uh, works with me, cooperates with me. So the goals are very different. And I think as when you're younger, uh, you know, you have different goals, but as you mature um, and you you please people less and you learn to please yourself more and, and and understand what makes you happy and what the definition of contentment and happiness is, you right. your mindset changes. Yeah. And this applies not only to fitness, but in your professional career, in your spiritual beliefs. Yeah. With growth comes knowledge. It's very powerful. No, 100 percent. What's the saying? Oh, I think I just made this up. Mind happiness of movement. Yes, I love that. That's beautiful. I'm going to copyright it if you don't. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's just something that obviously just came to me, but yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think movement is is very important in our everyday life. I mean, even something from just simple like lifting a spoon, or you need strength for that. And as we as we go, we progress in our in our years and in in life, uh, our muscles start to start start to like. We weren't as, as strong as we were when we were young, you know, because when you were young, you would think you're invincible. You would get up, you would heal quickly, you know, would go again. Um, and I know I struggle a lot with injuries during my sporting days. And I don't yeah. think I actually gave it a chance to actually heal properly because I was like super active. I was 
I just wanted to be, you know, busy all the time. And I just wanted to be out there on the field 24 seven. And I didn't want to like give my chance, my body the chance to actually, you know, recover. And I think yeah. looking back in hindsight, I think I should have given, you know, a little bit more attention to that part of, 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 of the fitness journey or the, the sporting life and who knows, uh, but I think God has a plan for all of us. The universe puts us on a, on a path that we, we should be uh, at this point in time. And uh, I'm super grateful that now I actually get the chance to like, you know, share my, my, my experiences and knowledge to somebody, to other people who are actually in that space right now. And I was, who are struggling, who are just contemplating whether to, you know, keep pushing or just to take a step back and just say, okay, I need, my body is my temple and I need to like, you know, really look after it to, yeah. to, to give my best, you know? So I think, yeah, looking after yourself right now is, is, is very, very important in our day. And actually, especially like in today's rat race, you know, we're so busy with so many things, uh, yes. responsibilities, you know, families, you know, your own self, your own goals and just time to like, Self-care, I think, is very important that we need to, like, really, like, incorporate in our lives. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you make a really good point. And something that I wanted to share, if this is the only thing that, you know, comes across, is that I really admire the moms out there um, and the single dads out there who have a full-time job. Uh, they have kids to take care of, and yet they still find time to get 20 minutes in the gym. So I applaud those ladies, you know, because, uh, and gentlemen, you know, who have so many things on their plate, but they still get to the gym. If that's all that you can do, 20 minutes a day, uh, some sort of movement, no matter what it is, you know, well done to you. You know, for in my instance, you know, I'm not as busy maybe as you are. So I have more time to do the things that I'm currently doing. But if you can just get to 20 minutes, that's good enough. Yeah, something. Uh, I know many of us, we're so worried about what the scale says and we want to lose five kgs or we want to fit into this dress. Uh, and the magic is actually in the consistency. So when girls ask me in the gym, like, how do you do it? How do you get in shape? How do you do pull-ups? Like, how do you do it? What's your secret? The secret is the consistency. Here's the secret, guys. I'm sharing it with you. Just get in your car, go to the gym, Park your car off and get into the gym and have a workout. If you start with 20 minutes at a time, do that consistently for two weeks, do it for a month. By the end of the third month, if you do not see a change, call me or send me a message or DM me. I guarantee you the consistency is where you will see the change. So forget about the weight that you want to lose um, and focus more on the consistency, just a ritual. And the beautiful thing is that as you see the weight change and your body transform from that consistency, the diet is going to clean up. The mindset is going to change. People are going to start giving you comments. And it all starts from getting in your car and going to the gym, parking your car off and getting onto the treadmill. That's it. No uh, like steroids, uh, a dietitian, uh, magic pills. Those things are great for many people. I'm not uh, dissing it or you know putting it down. But for the average person like you and I, guys, all you need to do is just get into the gym and keep the consistency. The magic will come. Yeah, you make a very important point there, especially with like rituals, like, and I'm sure routine comes in hand in hand with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Routine is a very important aspect of any any form of life. If if that's if that works for you, are there any uh, you know certain routines that that you do on a daily basis uh, that you know keeps you focused, like fully focused and and motivated? So I know the Manchester United fans, they like to have their left uh, shoestring tied and you have to have your scarf on. There's certain rituals. No, I'm just kidding. I know you're a huge United fan. Uh, for me, I think, uh, you know, being a project manager, a saying that we love is uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. So I love structure. I love lists. Uh, I'm quite a structured person. Um, so every Sunday, you know, I would love to do, I love to do meal prep and I repeat that on a Wednesday. And if the food is there and prepared and in front of you, the likelihood that you'll cheat and eat nonsense is a little less because we work in the entire day. And, and most times, you know, as in nature, you just grab whatever's in front of you and shove it down your mouth because you're hungry and you just need to go, you need fuel. So if your meal is prepped and in front of you, uh, the discipline is a little bit easier. It's easier to be a healthier. So to answer your question, the rituals that I love, yeah, I love uh, prepping my meals on a Sunday if I can, and then a Wednesday. And uh, I have a personal trainer at the moment. So I love 
training with him three times a week and he sets out my routine, of, you know, structure. So it's a lot uh, less work for me in terms of uh, putting a, a program together. But those are the two key things I think that are important. So meal prep and have a plan or a program for training that you can just follow and execute. It makes things a lot easier. So talk to me about meal prep. I know it's it's something that's a challenging aspect of actually, you know, that part of life. And a lot of people struggle with that, you know, perspective. How do you, when you began meal prepping, how did you begin to like incorporate into your, into your daily routine or into your fitness, fitness journey? Yeah, I think, uh, Shen, I nutrition is 70% of this weight loss journey, this fitness journey. I would say it's 30% exercise and 70% eating, especially as you get older. So I'm 42. At my age, you know, if I eat what I ate many years ago, I would be very round, right? So the older you get, the harder it is and the more disciplined you've got to be. Uh, but I think, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that my diet is perfect. If you know me and you're close to me, you'll know that I love chocolate. I eat copious amounts of chocolate, right? But I try to choose healthy options. So, for example, at the moment, my sweet treat or my cheat, which is usually on a Friday and the weekend, um, I would throw in some Rice Krispies with dark chocolate and a little bit of coconut oil. So that uh, kind of um, satisfies my sweet tooth, but it's a healthier option. I think saying no to yourself. Uh, saying to if you say to a child you know uh, don't do this or you're not allowed to do this there's something that happens mentally that uh, restricts you and we don't really like that so i think if you're a person who can have one block of chocolate and put the rest of the slab away well done to you i cannot do that i hats off to you i substitute that with a healthy option so dark chocolate uh, and i've got a few nice recipes on my page uh, one of them is a, a protein smoothie uh, it's got pineapple and, and protein powder and a uh, few goodies in there. So try to make things that work for you, that make it easier to stay, to stick to your diet. Um, but yeah, I'm being very honest. I think my nutrition is the one part that I can improve on. Uh, but if you, a person who's really disciplined, yeah, DM, DM me again, share some of those tips and tricks with me. But it, it's right up there in terms of weight loss and, and nutrition. Well, th thank you for sharing that. And yeah, guys, reach out to Rosie if you have uh, any questions on nutrition uh, and if there's any recipes you'd like to share with her, if you have any and, you know, vice versa. So check her page out. It's an awesome page. Thanks. Thanks. No, no worries. Where does, where does mindset come into play for you? Uh, you know, how does, how does the emotional part of this journey? Because at times we, you know, we want to see progress as quick as possible. Uh, and mm -hmm. sometimes emotionally we feel like we're not where we want to be. How do you, how do you uh, bring yourself back to say, okay, this is where I am right now. And I'm, I know I'm making progress and I will get to where I want to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So can you share, like, you, have you had any challenges in that perspective? hundred percent. Great question. Right. Uh, so to give you a little insight, and I think I want to make this as practical as possible. So I'm up at two fifty in the morning. So 10 to three. And wow. I see my personal trainer at four o'clock in the morning, right? Uh, and I'm in bed by 7.45. So I'm asleep by 8 p.m. Now, I can't allow my mind to trick me when that alarm goes off. I can't even think about it. There's, a, there's an, an influencer who says count to three or count to five and then out of bed. So my advice is sometimes you can't listen to your emotions or a lot of the time. You've got to allow discipline to steer and drive that decision to get to the gym. I would love to snooze and, you know, sleep for another half an hour or, or an hour. But, you know, they say that there's 1% uh, of individuals who take a, a decision, make a decision to be different, you know. So, yeah, emotions are good. I think for ladies as well, uh, many can identify or uh, with um, you know, certain times of the month where we want to eat more and where we are a little bit uh, more emotional. The trick here is to say, I'm going to do it no matter what, right? Unless you have an injury, I, then in which case I say, like you mentioned, just get some rest. But otherwise, just get into the gym. Don't be led by your emotions when it comes to discipline and exercise. Yeah. No, I think that's an important point as well. Like for for a lot of, pe a lot of you know, people, women who go through that, and girls who go through that, you know, that time of, of, of month. And it's, it becomes very like, I say crippling in a way like you've, you know, you just you don't have that, like that energy to, 
to do anything but just you know curl up and 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 just ride out the the, the storm so to speak uh, yeah. do you actually feel like exercise helps with that regard and you know if it's like worth just doing even like say five ten minute stretch you know does does that help yeah it does so I find, uh, you know, endorphins are a beautiful thing. So when you exercise, we release endorphins. They're happy uh, hormones. Uh, obviously, there's certain times that we can't push as heavy as we would like to. But I think get into gym, listen to your body. If you feel like you could do more stretching as opposed to more weightlifting, do that. Yeah, it's really important to listen to your body. Uh, but I, I want to be honest and say that you can train ladies. Like, let's. It's so easy for us to find excuses and say, this, this, that, my skin is bad, my, I'm having a bad hair day or whatever it is. Get into the gym, decrease the excuses. Like I say, again, if you're injured, don't train, listen to your body. If your doctor says no, don't train. But most of the times we allow our minds to play tricks with us. So so push, be the difference, be the 1%, be the change. I feel as well also a simple thing like just going for you know a walk, you know, helps yeah. clear the mind. Um, it's yeah. actually, you actually move in your body, you actually looking, into a different perspective, you, you taking in, you know, the world in, in a different way. Like you're not just sitting at home in your, you know, within your four walls, going out for a walk, you actually like, you feel, you smell the fresh air and, you know, it just changes the mindset. Even if it's a five, 10 minute walk, at least it, you know, you've done something, you know, to take yourself away from a situation that, you know, might have just plagued you in a way that I, you felt like I don't want to do it. But those kind of small things, like small steps, like lead to bigger, you know, the the, the bigger goals in life. We f- we forget that even just getting out of bed that day and just like doing a, a yoga session, like a five ten minute yoga session, or just even just a a walk, or you know something that that allows your body to move. It, yeah. it just it just releases all those those emo- those anxiety thoughts and 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 you know, depressional thoughts that you have and slowly, slowly you start to be, you begin to build yourself up to a place where you think, okay, if I'm having a bad day, it's not the end of the world. It's just, it's one of those things and it's life. We cannot, we cannot change that. There are going to be ups and downs, you know, not every day is going to be a plateau that's just going to go straight up. No, you're going to have days when it's just like, why? But give yourself even just five, 10 minutes, it makes a world of difference. That's just from my perspective. Fully agree. Yeah, my perspective as well. Yeah, great. And I know with a lot of these these journeys, a support system is very important. You know, do you have a family, partners, you know, a community that you can rely on to actually like also just give you that little bit of, of motivation? Yeah, so I, I think a uh, support structure is quite important. Uh, but for many years, I trained by myself. So I, I do love training with the trainer, but sometimes, you know, affordab- affordability for some people may be a challenge, uh, affording, a, um, you know, being able to afford the trainer. Um, it could be not being able to get to a gym. And like you say, you've got to train outside in, in the prom or play sports. Um, so support structure is really important. I've not always had it. I'm blessed to have it now. So I've got a partner who is uh, into bodybuilding and it's really awesome having someone, we motivate each other. We have the same passions. You know, we try to eat the same sort of food to motivate each other. Um, but if you don't have that, if you're an introvert and if you are self-motivated, then that's okay. Whatever works for you uh, and gets you into the gym and exercising is great. I'm quite a social person. I'm an extrovert. So I love having a fitness community uh, around me and we sort of just cheer each other on. But if you don't have that and you just, you know, can do it yourself then big ups to you. Yeah, do that. No, amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, And you're right. I think uh, sometimes we just need a little bit of external, you know, motivation to say, okay, let's go, you know. Let's just, let's get off the couch. Let's stop watching TV and let's just go for a little walk. You know, that, that's, that's, that is invaluable. You, you cannot, uh, you cannot put a price on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, amazing. So looking back at your journey uh, thus far, uh, what has been the proudest moment you would say for you? You know, I, I'm really, I think I, I am proudest uh, that I've kept the consistency. Uh, and, you know, being very open and sharing with you, I've had, I've gone through some challenges in my life, as everyone has. Um, you know, there have been some really uh, tough times, but I've kept uh, going to the gym. Uh, I've continued to push myself. 
And what I'm proudest of is that I've kept the consistency um, and I prioritize progress over perfection. So I don't get into the gym and I'm like, you know what, you are going to kill yourself today for three hours and look really good. But over time, over many, many years, and many people ask me like the one question I get asked by a lot of people is how do you do pull-ups all the time? Guys, that started from me not being able to do it at all. But it's just practice. It was just with the bands, then one, then two. Uh, I think it was um, one of the uh, golf players who said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. So right. this is not a short game. Yeah, we're in it for the long game. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, no, pull-ups is a is another beast on its own. Yeah. <laughs> so well done to you for, for actually actually getting it up. And I've seen your I've seen your videos. You yeah, it's pretty amazing so far. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Tishan. No, amazing. But uh, any before we uh, wrap up, is there any advice that you'd like to give the, the viewers and you know a short quote to for them to to live by? Sure, I would say. Uh, guys, don't be hard on yourself. Be kind to yourself. Uh, I look at the fitness models who compete on stage and I want to look like them. Similarly, people look at you and I and they're like, wow, how did you do that? But I challenge you, um, if you are able to get out of bed, to stand on your own two feet, to get to a gym, to drive to the gym, that is such a blessing. And the fact that you can do those things um, is a blessing. So I encourage you to use that. You know, I look at there's a guy who comes to our gym um, and he's in a wheelchair and he's doing pull-ups and killing his session. What is our excuse? Exactly. You know, God has blessed us with the breath. We've got strength. We have the ability. Let's do it while we have, while we can. So that's my challenge to you. And ladies, uh, you know, many moms, I'm, I live in Durban and, you know, our community is not very healthy. I think we're evolving, which is awesome. And I love it. Uh, but moms out there with kids, you know, if you think that you can't find the time, prioritize your health and yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup. You've got to take care of yourself. Take those 20 minutes out. If it's just that, go to the prom, get a little bit of exercise in. You're going to feel great. Your kids are going to feel great. Your hubby's going to feel great. Um, so yeah, just whatever you can uh, do that and be a little kind to yourself. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Rosie, for joining me on my first ever live. I really appreciate it. Super. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions from anybody who's viewing, we'll just give like two minutes for that. While we're waiting for the question, and I want to just applaud you for doing this. I know that you have a passion and, and a heart for people who are struggling and you're trying to motivate them. And is it, it takes a, a very special person to do that. So please continue what you're doing. Uh, I follow your journey very closely, although you're all the way in Canada. I love what you're doing. So Thank keep you. going. I know that you're touching many people. No, I appreciate that. Super, super grateful for those words. And I'm super blessed also to be able to do this for, for other people as well. So thank you so much. So we'll just give it a few minutes. If there's nothing else, uh, not many people join. A lot of, whoever has joined, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, this is one of many. We hope to have many more discussions like this in the future. And, and until the next one, guys, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Cheers, guys. Bye.